TK-622 was one of the last remaining Jango Fett clones created during the Galactic Empire's reign, before the cloning on Kamino for regular soldiers was drastically reduced in favor of more experimental clone creations. As such, TK-622 was a minority within the Stormtrooper ranks, which was comprised almost entirely of regular non-clone humans. And for many of the other humans, clones were viewed as subhuman, more as a machine rather than true living beings. Due to this widespread view on clones within the Empire, 622 had to deal with being constantly looked down upon by his fellow peers due to his clone origins. Regardless of this discrimination, 622 was crazy patriotic for the Empire, viewing it as the only system that prevented chaotic lawlessness and the greatest shield to protect people from the evils of crime syndicates. And his hatred for the Rebel Alliance ran deep as well, with him viewing them all as terrorists who wanted to bring down a legitimate government of peace and prosperity. Additionally, 622 likely learned of the Clone Wars during his training, a conflict that saw the deaths of millions of clones as they fought against another rogue enemy organization that sought to bring about change in the galaxy. On top of that, the clones helped create the Empire through their service and loyalty to Palpatine, being the backbone of its early years before being phased out by regular humans. So from this other perspective, him doing whatever it took to prevent such a devastating war like the Clone Wars, while also honoring the deaths of the clones that helped to create the Empire likely added to his motivation as well. 622's love for the Empire only increased once he met Commander Akobi, who quickly became the clone's best friend and almost a father-like figure to him. This relationship first came about when 622 saved Akobi's life during a military campaign on Malastair. On top of having saved his life, Akobi quickly realized 622's devotion to the Empire was unlike many other people's, with him being an Imperial to the bone and having the willingness to complete any mission no matter the cost. Akobi came to reward his savior by making him into a sergeant and always having the clone by his side, with them both becoming good friends as time went by. Eventually, the two were boarded on the newly completed Imperial Battle Station, the first Death Star. Upon their arrival, a seemingly defective RA-7 protocol droid randomly opened fire on Commander Akobi, who was once again saved by 622, as the clone wasted no time to blast the hostile droid into pieces. Believing it to be a malfunction due to the droid's low quality of AI, 622 was ordered to take the droid's head into maintenance to better understand exactly what went wrong with its programming. While at the maintenance office, the technician simply dismissed the accident as a simple malfunction, but 622 wasn't convinced, believing it was a planned assassination towards Akobi. The two got into a mini-argument over what really happened, with the technician subtly insulting the clone by comparing his kind to the basic AI of the droid that they were inspecting. During the inspection, 622 saw a glimpse of the droid's memory feed that looked like an order to specifically assassinate Akobi. But before he could further look into it, the droids had exploded, destroying any evidence that could have been found. When 622 brought up this concern with Akobi, he too dismissed it as nonsense and saw the attack from earlier as nothing more than a malfunction in a cheap droid model. All the commander had on his mind was receiving an award for a military campaign that was in reality a disaster, but the Empire had spun it as a success for propaganda purposes. Despite Akobi desiring not to receive such a shameful reward, even recognizing the awfulness of celebrating a campaign which caused the death of hundreds of innocents, 622 attempted to make him feel better by reminding his friend that not all the civilians were innocent, as they were supplying weapons to the rebels. As the two went down the halls of the Death Star, they were again attacked by a droid, but this time it was a massive Imperial probe droid that went right after Akobi, grabbing the commander and frying up his body with electricity. 622 was able to prevent the droid from fully killing Akobi grabbing the commander to safety once again, but this time he was too late, as the injuries on his friend were too great to fully recover from, with Akobi being put on life support systems and being given only a short amount of time left to live. While in the med bay getting healed up from other minor injuries he himself had received from the attack, 622 was now 100% sure that there was someone on board the Death Star that was attempting to kill Akobi. Feeling a bit of hatred towards both himself for failing to protect his friend, and also the culprit behind the attack itself, the clone was determined to do everything in his power to uncover the truth behind the attack and avenge Akobi. 
During his investigation in trying to discover the culprit behind the attacks, 622 was sent running all across the battle station, in many cases, spending up to half a day to just get to one end of the Death Star. His biggest fear, however, was encountering a higher-ranking trooper or officer, as he didn't want to be given an order that he would have to follow and be forced to abandon his personal mission on finding a Kobe's murderer. Despite what was likely days of attempting to locate the killer on the Death Star, 622's investigation ended up going nowhere, as he kept going around in circles, as it seemed like every time that he was sent to one location, a technician would say something completely different about the droid's programming, and then suggest that the clone go to a different department within the Death Star to help him instead. He was so committed to finding out who had attacked his friend that 622 even ignored alerts on the Death Star that warned that rebels had infiltrated the battle station and had freed a high-profile prisoner. But despite all the time and energy spent on his investigation, the clone ended up completely empty-handed and had no other clues left to follow. Near the cusps of giving up, 622 decided to spend Akoi's final moments together, as his friend was barely holding on to life, barely being sustained by the medical equipment attached to him. As he looked upon the severely injured man, 622 not only knew that his death will likely put an end to him finding his killer, but also be the end of his only friend in the entire galaxy. During his final moments, Akobi came to realize the sins that he had committed while serving in the Empire. During these cries out, 622 did everything that he could to calm down his friend and to convince him that he wasn't the monster he believed himself to be. But this didn't stop Akobi, who began to question his entire service to the Empire, and even started to wonder if the Rebel Alliance was right in the conflict. His biggest regret was the bombing of a civilian med center that he accidentally ordered due to faulty intel, and the awfulness of still being declared a hero during the battle and the deaths of the innocent people being swept under the rug by imperial propaganda. 622 still attempted to calm his friend and to make it appear like it was all the rebels' fault, that all the sins of his friend were to be blamed on the enemy. But Akobi wasn't buying that, and even acknowledged that while he was extremely proud of 622, he only wished the clone could see beyond his training, and be aware that the Empire wasn't always the righteous order of peace and prosperity that it painted itself to be. And with those final words, Akobi finally succumbed to his injuries, leaving 622 without anyone to call friend anymore, and his entire belief of the Empire shaken like never before. This all caused 622 to go into a near panic, going immediately back into searching for any clues he may have missed that could lead him to the killer of his friend. This meant so much to him, that for the first time in his entire life he actually disobeyed a direct order when the Death Star Command called all available personnel into battle stations during a rebel attack, and instead he continued his investigation in finding the killer of Akobi obsessing over it as he looked everywhere for clues. During this obsession, 622 began to wonder if he himself was malfunctioning like the droids everyone told him about, as he had just disobeyed an order for the first time, crushing his belief himself in being a perfect soldier. He also began to question Akobi's final words about the Empire and how they haunted him. Although he still believed in the Empire and was fully willing to die for it, 622 wondered if that was because he was truly loyal to it or if it was due to his creation, that if the feeling of loyalty was out of his own free will, or something deeply programmed into him like a droid. While his mind raced with all of these thoughts and self-doubts, 622 was surprised to find the culprit behind all the attacks standing right at the door. It was the technician from earlier, the same one who originally dismissed the attacks as a malfunction in the droid's AI. He had come to close up any loose ends that could link him to the assassinations, and his final one was a stubborn clone who just couldn't let things go. The technician was a traitor who began to sympathize with the Rebel Alliance following his discovery of what really happened during the military campaign Akobi had led, targeting the commander as a means of avenging the people that he had killed. As the technician fired upon 622, he mocked his fallen friend, calling Akobi a monster who deserved his death, and that the Empire was an evil force that needed to be destroyed. While the technician gloated about the doomed fall of the Empire, and that the Rebel Alliance was never going to die out, the rubble from the Rebel attack on the Death Star crashed upon him during their first failed attempt at the exhaust port. With the killer of his friend finally caught and given the justice he deserved, 622 began to reflect on himself and what he had experienced. 
He viewed himself as a failure in not only being unable to protect Jacobi, but also not being a good enough soldier in protecting the empire he still loved from the spreading virus of the rebellion. Recalling both his failure to help the Imperials fend off the rebel infiltration team and not joining them now during the attack that was happening to the battle station right at that moment. With his helmet now removed, 622 began to look upon the stars from his window, until finally making eye contact with Luke's X-Wing in the distance, witnessing the proton torpedoes entering the exhaust port. 622 accepted his fate that he was going to die soon, and that the Rebel Alliance was going to have this victory. Despite this, he still believed that the Empire would prevail in the war, and that the Rebellion's victory on destroying the Death Star was only going to reveal them as the true terrorists that they were. That this day would forever be remembered, and that the Rebels could not silence a million voices. And with those final thoughts of Imperial patriotism, 622 died shortly afterwards as he was vaporized in the Death Star's explosion along with everyone else on board. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, may the Force be with you.